Well guys, several of you spotted a listing. There were 25 of these for sale on eBay. You pointed them out to me and I went in and grabbed one and uh, within minutes, literally, they were all sold out. I think I was like, there were three left. Um, great luck, brand new Zeiss Econ, just beautiful finish. Anything shiny, you know, I got a weakness for. Uh, on the bottom of it though, um, it looks like it was machined or manufactured to accommodate well, I would say six pins and a, and a pin to hold the core, but I think it's manufactured for seven pins since this type of lock doesn't have a, a core retaining pin. Yet, when I look at the key, it is a five pin key. Now it does work beautifully and there may be, yeah, beautiful. There may be one pin, if I can get this pretty well lined up, there may be that six pin just on the tip of that key, but there's no way that there's a seventh pin in this guy, so up to six. Um, let's grab a pick here. It's a German lock, I'm gonna grab a German pick. This is really deep hook. It's not the deepest, but it's about as deep as I think it's gonna go. Blue band indicates 15,000, so nice and thin. And let me just count these real quick, see if there are six. Uh, I think there's only five. There's only five pins that I count. There may be a sixth one back there with a really weak spring, but since this is a brand new lock from the factory, they don't do business that way. Anyway, let's go ahead and figure this out. Um, let me clamp them up, and I'm gonna use the 3D lock printed holder because it works so well, put it in the vise, and let's pretend it's on the door, see if we can't get this guy picked. All right, I'm just gonna take that face plate off. I don't think we need it. I've already got the pick chosen. He seems like he will fit. I won't be able to pick from the bottom, but I should be able to roll him around and pick from that edge right there. Now I just need a tensioner. Not that one. Try that one. All right, that ought to work. I'm gonna to try to pick it. Let me reach up around the camera and try to pick it, I guess, clockwise. I'll start clockwise, see what happens. So all the way in, roll it, oops, roll it around to get it back behind the last pin, put the tensioner in there and apply a little tension and see what happens. Okay, the last one, I believe is five. He's still springy. Four, no, he don't wanna go anywhere. Let's not force him just yet. Maybe I'll come back and force him later. Three, two, okay, one is binding. Either that or I'm picking the tensioner, just to be sure here. That is one, definitely, all right. All right, I got two crunches out of it. Let me lower that guy back down since I don't think I've picked anything else. Let me just double check that. Definitely double crunch. It, it's not, and I'm not. I really, I, I got the tiniest of turn on the core, not enough to make me think that there's a uh, spool in there, but it is enough to make me suspicious. Maybe there's a serrated pin, or possibly an anti bump in position one. Let's keep looking. Just double check. A two is still springy. He's not going anywhere. Go back, get behind that really low one. Shoehorn them around there. I got the tiniest of clicks on pin five. Feels like two is now binding. Oh, little click, I'll take it. Three is still springy, let me double check one. One had come back down, so clearly I picked him in the wrong sequence. Check the back again, see if he fell down or is ready. Okay, four is definitely not going anywhere. And there we go, that was five. All right, um, I'm gonna say that there are at least two serrated like pins. Perhaps they're anti-bump, it's really difficult to say, but I did get several crunches. So let's go ahead and pull all this apart and see what we got inside of here. I expected for the price to get a little bit more entertainment value out of this guy and maybe some lessons learned, but you got what you got. All right, so we do have a key so I can lock him back up so stuff doesn't 
shoot out of there and surprise me like it always seems to do. I'm gonna back this camera up just a bit and let's find a screwdriver. See if this is the right size. Yep, maybe not. Oh, yeah, it is. Almost need a jeweler screwdriver. Of course, German lock, so we shouldn't be surprised. Probably some weird threading on there, too. Like 2.38 metric or something, you know, something nobody makes. So if you lose it, you're hosed. Look at that. Talk about precision. There's a shim on there to get the turn resistance just right. Check that out. And I think there's another one. Yep, there's two tiny little shims on there. Very, very thin, very foil-like. So that the core doesn't move back and forth that way at all. Yep, it's got the tiniest of movements to it. And they put those two shims on there. I wonder if all locks have to be hand-fitted with those shims to reduce that backlash. But definitely it's there now. Okay. Quit flapping your lips, Bill. Open it up. All right. So 90 degrees. And I happen to have one that's probably not going to work. See the power of negative thinking. It does. Check it out. Okay. It seems to fit. And look at that. would they do that? We have a steel pin in position one for anti-drill to keep people from drilling out. Um, and then we have four brass pins and two empty chambers on a brand new high security lock. That makes no sense. This is like the low end of high security, I think. All right, well, let's see what they put in here. We got a standard steel pin and all the rest of these are probably, oops, yep, all standards. Nothing weird in here. You can see the last two chambers are extra clean. Yeah. Why would they do that? How many pennies did they say? Or euros, I guess. There we go. All right, so let's see what we got. All right, I thought there was going to be some kind of serration on there. There is not. It is a standard pin in position one. We have a spool in two, very shallow spool. Spool in three. Spool in four. And what in the world? There are ball bearings. It looks like ball bearings in there. Rolling around inside of that spring. What in the world would that be for? Huh. And this one had it too. I didn't notice it till I started looking. Trapped ball bearings. Probably to keep it from compressing to prevent maybe a comb attack. And that's pure guess on my part. All right, let's go to the back. And I'm going to go slow just to make sure there's any kind of craziness in here. It is a German design, so it could, could be anything in there. And a standard pin in position five. No, it's not either. It has... Come here, you. Yeah, it is. I was going to say it has reduced diameter, but I think that's just the coloration on the pin on that side. So it's standard pin. And last but not least. And two completely empty chambers. What a beautiful lock and what a waste of security to not populate those two. Anyway, guys, there you go. I appreciate you guys that pointed this out to me and a chance to take a look at it. Uh, I'm going to look around, try to find at least one more pin when I pin this back up that will ride on the very tip. So it'll be a moderate cut, but it will be one more level of security. So that will leave only one empty chamber. If I can find another one of these keys laying around that it, that'll accommodate seven pins. I will completely repin this lock before I send it out to one of you guys. Anyway, appreciate your time. Stay safe. Stay legal.